Dr. Keith. How you guys feeling? Is this, a, is this a gun crowd? You guys have guns? A couple? You're not excited about it? Does anyone have one now that I can hold? I've been thinking about buying a gun, dog. That's been on my mind lately. You know, I just, I want one. I want to feel that power. I'm sick of getting bullied and shit, you know? I want to do something about it. The, the issue, though, is the only time in my life I've ever held a gun, it was when I was in high school, and I was in the woods with my friends, and we were all taking turns shooting it. And the whole time I was holding it, my brain was going, you should kill your friends. <laughs> I was like, fuck, maybe a gun's not for me then, you know? But also, that was like 10 years ago, I could try again. I should've just became a cop, that's for sure. You guys like cops? It's hard to tell in the OC, because you know, sometimes they're like, everyone's a cop, but you guys seem like a cool crowd. I miss cops, man, I do. I, that was, to me, that was like the worst part of cancel culture, was they took away the TV show Cops. For real, that's been my favorite show since I was a boy, and there's no new episodes. I don't know what I'm supposed to watch. It's rude. Cops to me, the, the show Cops to me is like white people's uh, Cosby show. Right, just because when you're young you watch it, you're like, oh, these are obviously the good guys. And then you grow up and read the news and... <laughs> Turns out they've been up to some bad shit, so... You just gotta separate the art from the artist if you want to enjoy. Okay, there's two smart people in the room. <laughs> Are the rest of y'all smart? Yeah. It's hard to tell the OC because sometimes... <laughs> I love coming down here, man. This is one of my favorite rooms to do. The rec room is fun. It's always fun. Um, yeah, no, no, there's no new cops to watch. I've been watching a lot of uh, trans porn lately. I don't know what it is, man. Something about those women. They're just, like, smarter or... <laughs> more emotionally stable, you know? <laughs> Better drivers, that's why I like it. <laughs> that's a good joke. That's the first time I've ever told that. That's funny. Okay, thank you, thank you. All my fellow transport people, that's very nice of you. <laughs> um, I've been going to therapy lately. I just started therapy. Uh, my, my therapist is gay, man. Not like lame, like I mean in a new way. <laughs> Like he's really, he's like a gay man. Which is fine, but I just don't know who to talk to about it, you know? Because I'm in that room sometimes and I have thoughts and I'm supposed to share them all with him. And I'm like, I don't know if I can, you know? So, what's up? Is it unprofessional? No, he's just a guy that I met. <laughs> oh yeah, it's a professional. What kind of question is that? It, do, you, <laughs> do you go to therapy? Not it's a yes or no question. I don't know how this could be. <laughs> Why are you answering? You shut up. Who are you? You're a therapist. Not a professional, obviously. He pays me in drinks. Your therapist is also gay, I see. That's, uh... <laughs> All right. Do you actually go to therapy? No, would be the correct answer to that, though. <laughs> but you used to, you have been to therapy, but you got better? Yeah. No, what was that? <laughs> What's your guys' relationship for real? Just friends? Yeah, just friends. Yeah. You ever seen each other's penises? <laughs> On the weekends. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you looking for? I'm trying to, it's, it's hard to see you guys, there's lights in my face, so I wanted to see what you look like. You know, more... Two strapping young men. I don't know if I'd say strapping. And, and barely young. You're, you're giving yourself a lot of credit here. I like that. I like that. Yeah, no, you're two of the goofiest motherfuckers I've ever seen in my life. But if you want to say strapping, we can say strapping. That's fine. I, I like the way that sounds a lot better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, now shut up, though. This part is over. Uh, I have stuff I want to do. I only have 10 minutes, so. We can talk after if you want to talk after, but please don't find me after. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to 
to be busy, you know? <laughs> um, fuck, I don't remember what I was going to do next. Therapist. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's, he's a gay guy. Um, we've been talking about suicide lately. Um, he's been encouraging me. He thinks that... He believes in that. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, we just... We've been talking about suicide because it's, it, suicide has affected my life. Like, a lot of my heroes have killed themselves. Um, one recently, his name was Jeffrey Epstein. He was... <laughs> no, but genuinely, like, it, a lot of heroes in my life have uh, killed themselves. And so it's just something I want to, like, be familiar with. It's something I want to, you know, at least get to know a little bit so I can understand it a little bit. Uh, one of my heroes, uh, his name was Chester Bennington. He was a lead singer of Lincoln Park committed suicide a couple years ago. It was, it was very sad. They've been my favorite band since I was a boy. So it was very sad. Um, but it was like a little bit funny when people acted surprised. You know what I mean? Like, did, didn't you listen to his music? This man was shouting, crawling in my skin, these wounds they will not heal. And we were like, how could this have happened? <laughs> Like, obviously that guy, you know? Oh, if only there was some way he could have told us how he felt. <laughs> For like 15 years in front of millions of people. We're all just like singing along to it. That's, that's so crazy. Like, obviously he's dead, you know? He has a song where he yells, put me out of my misery, 17 times. You know, he, I think he struggled a little bit. It just, it's not surprising and we acted surprised. You know who I'd be surprised if they killed themselves? Is Jack Johnson. Do you know him? He sings about banana pancakes and bubbly toast. If he, if he died, I'd be like, that's crazy. This doesn't make sense. But the unhealable wounds guy, I'm like, okay, I get that, you know? <laughs> it's crazy. I know, that, uh, I know that me liking cops and Lincoln Park makes me look like a January 6th guy. Uh, <laughs> I understand that. Was anyone in here there? <laughs> It's hard to tell in the OC sometimes because there's a lot of... <laughs> January 6th to me was funny because uh, we just let... It's, it shows how unafraid this country is of white people. You know what I mean? We just let them in and they walked around and took pictures. We were like, ah, this is scary, you know? If there was any other race of people trying to get into the White House, they'd all be dead. <laughs> on the steps of the White House, you understand? Any other race. It, man, maybe not Asians. I think Asians could have gotten in. I think we would have let them in. They would have taken the same amount of pictures, too, probably. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's crazy nowadays being white, man. Not like actually, but for white people, it's pretty crazy for us. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm not saying it's hard. It's still the easiest thing to be in this country as a white guy. But it's like a little more inconvenient than I was expecting. <laughs> so I'm just dealing with that, you know? Just because I grew up in the Midwest. I grew up around white people. You know, my teachers were all white. My family was all white. Brothers and sisters all white. And all the stuff I learned isn't what actually happened. But I didn't know that. You know what I mean? Like, when we learned about other cultures and stuff, like, they taught us about the Native Americans, and they'd be like, oh, Pocahontas, yeah, she showed us more land to have because she liked us so much. I was like, well, that's sick. That's nice of her. You know? I've seen the movie. It makes sense. <laughs> When we learned about slavery, they were like, yeah, it was bad, but Martin Luther, uh, uh, what's his name? Abraham Lincoln, a white man, ended it. And I was like, oh, you're welcome. That's very nice of us to do. <laughs> like, they, never, they always portrayed us as the hero when they taught us kids about, even when we learned about Martin Luther King in the Civil Rights Movement, they chose pictures of him marching with like a big group of people behind him. And in that group of people, there was always at least one white guy. And I would look at him and be like, there we are, dog. <laughs> Right side of history, you know? It's just crazy to grow up and be like, I don't think all of that was correct, the way they taught us. I also remember reading about propaganda in other countries, you know, like Nazi Germany and shit. And as a kid, I would always read those stories and be like, man, those people must have been so dumb to fall for all that. <laughs> and then the bell would ring, we all stand up and turn to the flag and go, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States. It's like, fuck, man, they got us too, I think, you know? crazy. It's the hardest time in history, the hardest time in human history to be a straight white man. So a little empathy would be nice <laughs> as we go through this. If you think about it, this is, this is kind of our slavery, so it's... 
Y'all turn on me on that one, huh? I am a Native American. I am, I was born here, that's what that means, technically. So. Sorry, you know, I'm just smart, I guess, I don't know. I know definitions of things. Um, I, I just started dating, um, which is kind of hard when you say the things I say. Uh, <laughs> some women don't like it. I just got this new girl, though. Um, she's much hotter than you would think she is. Um, like, seriously, she, yeah. But I, her, she's psychotic. Her, like, her hobby, okay? The one thing she likes to do the most all day, every day, is she loves watching murder mystery documentaries. Right? She loves watching women die. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? I'll come home from work and there'll be real pictures of real, actual dead women on our TV. And she'll be like curled up and smiling at it. I'm like, this is... I think it's like rotting her brain a little bit because I took her camping a couple weeks ago and she didn't enjoy the trip at all because the whole time she was paranoid. Looking in bushes <laughs> and behind trees for a killer. I was like, dog, if you paid any attention to those shows, you know that it would be me that would kill you, right? <laughs> It's never lunch, but it's a random guy in the woods. What fucking shows are you watching? It's a husband, it's a boyfriend, it's a lover. The call is coming from inside the tent, you know? <laughs> I had this conversation with her. I was like, this is probably bad for your mental health to just watch death over and over and over and over again. And she goes, no, this teaches me to know what to look out for in the real world. <laughs> I was like, no, it does it. 100% of the women we watch are dead. <laughs> You understand? You're taking the wrong notes, dog. You're watching the wrong game film. That's a 0% success rate. You're not learning anything. You know who it is? <laughs> Me. It's her birthday in two weeks, and I, I think I'm gonna kill her. Like, I don't know what else. <laughs> I don't know what else to do. I just want her to be happy, man. <laughs> All right, that's all for me. Thank you guys so much.